Today I fucked up by sending a call from the International Space Station to voicemail. This happened two days ago, Sunday. A friend of mine is currently on his second mission to the ISS. I saw a call come in on my iPhone and the caller ID said, us government. I first had that thought, feeling you get when the principal calls you to their office. Crap. What did I do that I thought I got away with but maybe I didn't? I was in the middle of something with a bunch of people and showed them what it said on my phone and everyone was all, don't answer it. Between everyone's suggestion and my gut feeling of being in trouble, I sent it to voicemail. Turns out it was my buddy calling from space. I had a chance to speak to someone that wasn't on earth and screwed it up. First thing he said in the voicemail was, you probably saw a call from us governor and turned it down. I know he'll call again, but damn I feel like an idiot right now. Too long did not read. My buddy called me from the I International Space Station and the caller ID said, us gov. So I sent it to voicemail and missed a call from space. No matter how many fuckups you have in life, big or small, you have a friend who looked out at the whole of earth and decided to call you. Who on earth would be ringing me at this hour? The fact he knew why you didn't answer tells me him and others have probably had the experience one too many times and know the drill. I feel like it's almost cooler that you have a voicemail from someone calling from space since you can save it. Those long distance charges bout to be insane. Hi Nick this is Bob Hines calling you from the International Space Station. It's Tuesday May 24th, and we're currently about 300 miles up, just passing the Horn of Africa and about to enter the clear blue waters of the Indian Ocean. Anyway the folks here at NASA and I were trying to get in touch with you about your car's extended warranty. Today I fucked up by not knowing my own genital anatomy at 21. My whole life, I've prided myself on not being like the, idiots, who don't know their own genitals and think things like having sex upside down will prevent pregnancy, or that the vagina magically gets loose. I paid attention in sex ed and figured, hey, since I can look at my own bits, that's enough. However, someone linked a diagram on yet another r, bad women's anatomy post, and I had a revelation that I was the idiot. Turns out, I didn't know where my own fucking pee was coming from. Why do some idiots think you pee from your vagina, I thought, when the urethra is so far away. What I thought was my urethra, is my clitoris. And the actual urethra, wouldn't you know, is quite close to the vaginal opening. After 21 years of being alive, however, I've finally found the clitoris. God damn it. I'm just forever thankful this didn't happen during sexy times, or I'd just expire on the spot. Please learn from my mistakes, and look at your bits with a mirror. Make sure you know what everything is. Don't be like me. Too long did not read. I thought my clitoris was my pee-pee hole and I now wish to perish. Edit. To whoever awarded this, helpful, you're welcome. May you find the elusive creature that is the clitoris. I can top that. My kid was like 10 before he realized he had a butthole. He had put no thought into how the poop came out. He announced he found a hole there and poop came out. Imagine Op asking her partner, why are you rubbing my urethra, during foreplay lol. My 13-year-old son proudly told his mom and I that a girl's clitoris is in their butthole. After an hour-ish long conversation, some human anatomy images, and lots of conversation. His theory was debunked. To his future GFs and wife. Thank his mom. I was Hawkward dad. My brother was convinced for a very long time that scrotum and bladder were interchangeable terms and his scrotum was where his urine was stored until it was ready to be peed out. Once I found my clitoris, I enjoyed finding it again and again, sometimes twice in one day. After 21 years of being alive, however, I've finally found the clitoris. I'm sure this revelation will revolutionize certain experiences for you. Lol. Today I fucked up by not disclosing that our professor was also my father. I'm using a throwaway because my main has a lot of identifying information. Also I have dyslexia and don't speak English natively. Posting a second time because I forgot the too long did not read. But anyway. My dad was poached by my university and got an amazing contract for a teaching research position. So anyway, I am studying something similar that both my parents did. So obviously this semester I had to go to a class that only my father was teaching. I went to class and never told anyone that our professor was my dad. I don't like to socialize anyway lol. We are around 100 students in his lecture, so I figured it wouldn't be a big deal either way. It's just a final exam with multiple choices and not like a paper that had bias options. The fuck up happened Monday afternoon. After class I waited for my dad and we went to eat lunch together. 
After lunch we were talking and my dad kissed me on the head before I left for home. Apparently some of the students of class were walking by. And intrigued by me eating with our professor they started filming us. Including the kiss on the head. This afternoon the class WhatsApp group started being flooded with screenshots and smug messages of the people that saw it. Saying, reported to administrators, I responded by posting a childhood picture with me and my dad. It's very clearly me because my face kinda never changed. The chat immediately died down. Then 10 minutes later a fucking war started. Students saying that I was a nepotist and it was my fault for not making an announcement about my father. Other students saying that the others were at fault. Again others making stupid incest jokes. Others spamming the group with stickers. Others hitting me up privately to talk them up to my dad. Others to ask me if I could steal my dad's exam. This is the reason I don't socialize. Too long did not read. Didn't tell classmates that my father was our professor. Started a student war. Was reported to administration and am now terrified to put a foot on campus ever again. It's not really you who effed up. Especially when your classmates reinforce your reason not to tell them. You never owed these strangers an explanation regarding your personal life. Humanity sucks. Not your fault. People like to assume shit. Lol. If they actually cared about your safety and well-being then they wouldn't have flooded chat with smug messages and pictures. They would have reported it and checked in with you only. They fucked up, not you. Neopatism my A. I assume you don't dare not being the best in class when both your parents are lecturing in that field. Clearly you had better starting conditions than the others but it's not that your father spoils you or prefers you in class. It's like you ingested that knowledge from birth on even if you wouldn't have actually worked on that. That's when I would say, all this information will be shared with the dean of the students if you don't quiet down about it and leave it alone. Especially people asking to steal the finals and tests, the incest jokes, and asking to be talked up. You didn't fuck up. Nosy people with phone cameras, addicted to drama and judging others on social media fucked up. Jumped to assumptions and posted them online. Going to the source and asking what the relationship was didn't cross their mind. I'm so sorry you are going through this. I promise you people will move on to the next drama soon. Today I fucked up by being issued a mini vibrator by Navy Medicine. So almost one month ago, this isn't the today I fucked up part although it was a foo. I was cutting zip ties at work and one of the zip ties had been pulled so tight that I couldn't get scissors underneath of it. In hindsight I should have grabbed pliers to break the cinch part but such is life, anyways. I pulled out my pocket knife and was able to get the blade enough into the zip tie to cut it. I was pushing the blade as much as I could while trying to be careful but it wasn't working so I decided to quickly adjust my grip with my non-cutting hand, which then caused the knife to slide through the tie like butter. The blade stopped at the bone in my left hand index finger. I immediately went over to medical on base and our flight surgeon gave me stitches. Fast forward. Today I had an appointment for occupational therapy since something internal to the finger isn't healing properly. My range of motion and strength with the finger is extremely limited. Mind you this is my first time at OT and the Navy occupational therapist, F, assessing me was extremely professional and helpful through the assessment. She determined that I need an MRI and that until then I would do, finger exercises, to try to help strengthen it. Well, then she starts reaching into drawers and pulling items out and placing them on the table. First, she pulls out what looks like a wooden Nerf dart with a rubber tip. It's essentially a foam roller for the scar tissue in my finger. Then she pulls out a jar of putty and explains how I will do different exercises with the putty. Interesting. Well then she grabs a sleek and slender box from the cabinet. The label of the box is covered by her hand while she holds it and continues to talk about it. I want you to use this three times a day, it doesn't matter when, you can use it at work, at home, etc. She sets the box down on the table and I immediately see that the box says in big bold letters across the label, mini vibrator. Mind you, internally I am doing everything I can in my power to be an adult, but externally my eyebrows and eyelids reach their max apogee and the nurse notices this, and she quickly looks away. Thankfully, you have to wear a mask in the hospital so she can't see my mouth. I, now greatly confused, slowly grab the box. She continues talking about the mini vibrator. So whenever you want to use your vibrator, I want you to push firmly but not too hard. My head is frozen, but my eyes are beginning to dart around the room, as if I'm looking to see if anyone else is hearing this. You want it to feel good, but not hurt. Trying my best to remain professional. 
Make sure to alternate using your vibrator between using short strokes and long strokes and in a circular manner. My nose does that thing when you see a meme and you laugh silently and to everyone else it just sounds like a dog sniffing something. Her eyes immediately make contact with mine and I can tell she is holding back a smile under her mask at which point I lose my shit and start laughing. I try to reel it back and say I'm sorry I'm trying my best to be an adult right now. After I compose myself I ask so. Again just to be clear I am being issued by Navy Medicine a mini vibrator? She starts laughing, and reassures me that it is very hard to get through that each time without laughing. She assures me that she will not put, mini vibrator, in my medical record. Now to the foo. So I throw the mini vibrator in my flight suit pocket, take all the other fun toys, throw them in my car, and drove back to work. It's around 1900 when I get home for the day and my wife had been looking for her small purse all day and I remembered it was in the front seat of my car. Babe it's in the passenger seat on the floor of my car, she goes out to look. The door opens and she is standing in the doorway with a confused and stern look on her face. Why the heck do you have an empty box for a mini vibrator under your seat? I immediately realized how horrible that looked from her perspective. While driving home, the box must have rolled under the seat. The vibrator was also still in my flight suit pocket. I then had to explain how I was issued a vibrator for occupational therapy and we had a great laugh. Too long did not read. Was issued a mini vibrator by Navy Medicine at occupational therapy in order to break up scar tissue in my hand and my wife found the empty box under the passenger seat of my car. That's pretty funny. Did your wife believe you? LMFA. Lol so this device is meant for stimulation of your finger yeah? As a form of physical therapy. Hope your finger heals well. My significant other severed tendons on one of his fingers and had to do pretty much the same exercises after surgery. Vibrator included lol, to fix some of the nerve damage and flexibility. He's pretty much all good today besides a small amount of nerve damage and a bent fingertip. When he started therapy two fingers were permanently curled up and basically useless so I will implore that those exercises work. Best wishes. I was reading this as though you were a woman. Then I got to the part where, my wife, oh, he's a man. Actually, you could still be either, but it's a better story if you are a man. When did you start using that mini vibrator on your cut? When my wife found it in my car.